let's cover easy OBS tips to upgrade your stream. These are simple tools that when used properly can give you the ability to camera switch like a TV show, control your scenes and sources while in game, and apply dozens of effects like this rain, map, hellfire, old timey film, VHS overlay, and more that I have made and will give you entirely for free in this video. If you want to download these, stick around at the end of the video so you know where to get them and how to use them, but first, Time codes are in the description so you can skip ahead to whatever you need in it. And screw it, let's do a second giveaway while we're here. Thanks to our sponsor OWN for today's giveaway. OWN are the best place to get stream overlays, alerts, and more. They've even got this animated emote maker these days. Seriously, they have everything. And now they've also given me dozens of vouchers for their store to give away in the comments. All you have to do to enter is comment hashtag OWN giveaway and what you would like to grab. Maybe it's a new overlay like the pixel pack. Maybe it's those animated emotes that I've showed you. Or maybe it's just a profile banner for your socials. Whatever it is, just comment and I'll let the winners know soon. Massive thank you to OWN for sponsoring the video. If you want to support me, click the link in the description and check them out. Getting straight into it, I want to cover two quick tips that will help you endlessly. The first is called scene splitters. As you add more and more to your stream, you're going to end up with dozens of different scenes, sources, and effects. It gets crowded and complicated fast. That's why we use scene splitters. Scene splitters are simply scenes to help keep your scene list organized. For example, I have six scenes for different types of gaming content. I have a chatting scene. I have three scenes for starting, be right back, and ending. I have six scenes for effects and 10 scenes containing cameras. Yeah, I'm a bit of an addict, but trust me, I'm not as bad as other streamers. To keep this easy to navigate, I create a new scene and add several dashes to it and then call it main scene. I'll drag this to the top and I'll organize my main scenes, such as my chatting, my starting soon, my be right back, and my ending under it. I'll then do this again, but call it gaming and I'll organize my gaming scenes under it. I do this until I've cleaned up my entire list, but most importantly, I'll make sure I add a split up that is called the effect split up. This is where I will place all of my rain, my fire, everything I showed you earlier. And this might not seem important. It might look silly, but trust me, we're about to set up nested scenes. And if you aren't organized, well, this will go wrong very fast. But what are nested scenes? Well, simply put, they are scenes inside scenes. And because I heard you like scenes, we're going to add more scenes to your nested scenes. And we're going to be using nested scenes today to add those free effects, but also to let you camera switch at will. You see, in TV shows, movies, and videos, creators use different size shots to keep viewers engaged or to emphasize points. Going to close-ups to hammer home important lines or cutting to wides to show isolation, space, and look, changing shot size just keeps people from getting bored. It's the same as adding Subway Surfer to the side of a video. The issue is, in OBS, when you add a camera source and try to edit it, it often applies any edits globally, but if you nest the camera in a scene and then apply edits or effects to the scene, it doesn't. Meaning you can be more flexible, creative, and also everyone knows the more OBS scenes you have, the better content you make. First, we're gonna create a scene called camera main and we're gonna add our main camera to it, surprisingly, and make sure it's full screen. Next, we will create four more scenes. One is called camera main medium, then main close, then main extreme close, and finally, the last scene should be called camera all cams. We're also going to add our camera to the medium scene and we're gonna grab the edges of the corner and we're gonna drag them to go from this wide to more of a medium shot. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing for the close scene but drag it even closer and repeat again for the extreme close up as well. The final scene we made was called All Cams, and just like the title suggests, we're going to add all our cams to it. So open it up and we're going to add our main, medium, close, and extreme close up to it. We're gonna stack these from widest at the bottom to the tightest at the top and hide the top three. Now, if we click these eyes, you can see we are cutting between shot sizes like a TV show would, but this is useless here. It needs to be in our actual chatting and game scene. So go to your chatting scene, and if you don't have a scene just for chatting that is full screen camera, I really recommend adding it. Once you do, click add sources, add scene, and add your all cam scene. Now, even when we're live and we're sitting in our just chatting scene, chatting away to our audience, if the scenes nested inside all cams are turned on and off, well, we'll cut to different shot sizes. So if we're telling a joke, for example, we can cut in for the punchline, which is really helpful if like most streamers, you're not actually that funny. It works exactly the same in a gaming scene. For example, if we put out all cams in the gaming scene I use, but then crop the edges with the alt drag so it's more like a webcam, we can then change cameras and ta-da, we're camera switching on our game scene. LJ, you giant idiot. How am I meant to turn these scenes nested inside scenes on and off if I'm chatting or in game? Seriously, terrible video, I'm unsubscribing. Firstly, rude. And secondly, that's why we're learning how to use hotkeys today as well. 
so you can activate not just these camera switches but also any source at all again like these free effects coming up but also even music and sound effects so first the camera switching head to your settings and click hotkeys search up camera and find the all cam scene in bold Below that, you'll see a show hide for each of the camera sizes. We're going to hotkey each to something we don't touch very often or by accident, so we're not switching when we don't want to. For example, control shift one for show and hide, and then repeat this for all four and click apply. Now in your chatting scene or any scene that has the all cam source in it, you can press, for example, control shift two, and it will cut to the medium three for the close up and four for the extreme close up. Just remember to press it again to hide it. For example, if I show my medium shot, then my extreme, but hide my extreme, well, my medium was still there. So I should go to my medium, then to my extreme, hide my medium, hide my extreme. And as you can see, I cut back to my wide. Don't worry, with practice, it becomes second nature. You'll remember what's on and off when switching. And yes, if you do have a stream deck, you can make hotkeys locally on that rather than inside OBS. But not everyone has that kind of money. Okay, Mr. One Percenter in my comments telling new streamers to spend hundreds of dollars before they even have five viewers. Calm down. These free hotkeys work for literally any source. For example, if I added a specific song or of course a sound effect to a scene, I could find that sound and add a hotkey for it to turn on. And as you'll soon see, we can also link that song to start when certain effects begin. Let me just get this up and running. Uh... Gemini, it's good to see you. Sorry, I'm sure you couldn't hear me until now, but I'm back at the Zeppelin races. But first, let's cover filters. You might already know what a filter is because you'll likely be using them on your microphone to add noise suppression or a noise gate. But we're going to use these on visuals today. So right click on your all cam scene that you added to chatting, click filters and click the plus. There will be dozens or potentially more options here that you can play with that do things like scroll sources, add slight delays, add masks, remove green screens, and of course, add color correction to your footage. It would be an hour long video if I tried to cover all of these in detail. So instead today, we're just going to be focusing on adding a specific color correction to teach you how to use filters. Specifically, we're going to be adding these filters to our rain scene to make it even sadder today. That's right, it's finally time to combine everything and add the effects to OBS. I don't know what this movement was. To download these, you'll go to the description, find the Discord link, click it, and be met with the rules and roles section. Please read the rules, including this part here about not pinging me. Once you have read them all, verify and you'll get access to the free graphics channel that is also heavily mentioned in bold in the rules section. Go there there, find the effect pack and download it. And because it's all so detailed and clear, you won't need to ping me for anything. Especially because again, these are entirely free. No payments, no emails, nothing at all. You can even leave the Discord after you finish downloading them. I don't care. But I will say, if you want more effects like this, comment down below. I'm working on more stingers, more overlays and special redeem effects where viewers can throw bricks at your head. If you want them to come faster, becoming a member to the channel for just $1 a month really helps fund my time in making these. But if you can't, that's okay. I'll release them for free anyway. Once you've downloaded these, you'll want to extract the folder. There is a guide on how to do that in the how to install channel. So luckily you won't need to ping me. And now we're going to add these to OBS, starting with rain. First, we want to make a nested scene. So create a scene called sad rain. And now we're going to place our all cam scene in here and then click the plus, click media source and add the rain source you downloaded from the Discord. Double click it to open its properties and make sure you click the loop button so the file replays when it ends. Otherwise, it'll play for a few seconds and then stop. Now, personally, I like my rain a bit more transparent. So I'm gonna right click it, I'm gonna click filters and I'm going to add a color correction, find opacity and just ever so slightly lower this until it looks good for me. Now, if we went to our chatting scene and added this rain scene as a nested scene, much like we did earlier, making sure we place this high enough in the source list that it covers our camera and anything else that we don't want to appear over the top of it. And then much like earlier again, we can add a hotkey to turn on this specific scene. I'm going to go with control shift F because pressing F is sad. And ta-da, my rain is now activated except it's not sad enough. So let's use those filters again. First control shift F to hide our rain. Now right click the sad rain scene, filters and add color correction. You're going to find the saturation and drag this to zero, making it black and white. If we press our hotkey in chatting now, it's much sadder. 
but we can be sadder. It's 2024. The bees are leaving us. Aliens aren't contacting us. It's just you and me, and we can be sadder. We're going to do this with a sad song. Go to the rain scene, add source, and add a sad song of your choice. Personally, I really like Franz Gordon, Fox here. It is from Epidemic Sound, which is paid. So if you want to find music resources, well, I have them linked in the resource center of the Discord. Once added, you likely can't hear the sad song. So go to the mixer, lower the volume slightly, then click the three dots, advanced audio properties, and set the monitoring to monitor only. This means you can hear it. And because you should have desktop audio in some degree going to your stream, that means they'll be able to hear it because you can hear it. Now head back to chatting, smack that hotkey, and bam, it's black and white, transparent rain with sad music and because we added our all cam to the rain scene rather than just a basic cam we can also vision switch to be even close up sadness or just stay wide if you'd like but one issue like me you might have a global source capturing background music like lo-fi or whatever else and this would clash with the sad music we added to our sad scene so if we go to our settings hotkeys search for the global music source in my case mine is called music I can then hotkey to mute and unmute when I press Control Shift F. This means when I reveal my rain scene by pressing Control Shift F, I'm also muting my other music and when I hide it, I'm unmuting my music. If you don't have a global source for music, you might just need to be quick on the old manual pausing of the song or muting it wherever it's playing from. And now if you wanna add any of the other effects like fire, math, VHS, or anything else, the steps are really the same. Just use nested scenes, filters, and hotkeys to add them like the pro you are. And if you wanna learn how to animate anything inside OBS, subscribe, because that video is coming next week. Click here for more free graphics and overlays, and please consider becoming a member for just $1 a month. I'll see you guys next week.